to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Whereas Key Club International is a self-governing student-led organization where each year Key Club members elect their student officers district and international levels during club meetings and district international conventions. And whereas individual Key Clubs belong to divisions which belong to districts which comprise Key Club International. And whereas the Shiklami High School Key Club is the oldest Key Club in Pennsylvania. Whereas the Shiklami High School Key Club is being honored for winning first place in the non-traditional scrapbook contest during the 2017 Key Club International Convention held in San Antonio, Texas from July 5th through the 9th. And whereas this scrap, their scrapbook was created in a suitcase which was filled with layouts of its projects from each story, having six to eight different items to completely represent a project, the club also created a book that told the story of the places and the people, serving between 2016 and March 2017 district conventions. The club has placed at the International Convention four out of the last five years. Whereas the club, club is comprised of students Craig Purcell, Brooke Brown, Cecilia Schellenberger, Margaret Kapinski, C.J. Reeder, Karim Morden, Ruth Molino, Olaya, sorry about that, uh, Kelsey Rude, Ford Yoakum, and Amy Grogser. And is, is guided by advisors Marsha Koff and Tanya Reeder. So now therefore I, David Alperson, being mayor of the city of Sumner and the county of Northumberland, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, on behalf of all our city council members and citizens of Sunbury, do hereby proclaim August 14, 2017, as Shiklami High School Key Club Day in the city, and urge all citizens to congratulate the members and thank them for their volunteerism. Congratulations.
So we would have soap. You can't go anywhere without your pillow. Your toothbrush. Your toothbrush and toothpaste. toothpaste. You got to take a camera because that's how you create your scrapbook. A blankie or a towel, mm -hmm. depending on where you're going. You're going swimming. A hairbrush. <coughs> you would have shirts and of course you wouldn't wear the same shirt so each shirt in your suitcase would be different. You've got to get there. <coughs> All the places you'll go. Maybe it's by airplane. Or a little wagon. I think my favorite though was the school bus. We'll see. Oh. There was the boat. And then, of course, you're going places. So we chose states that are important to the Key Club world. Of course, Texas, because that's where our international convention was this year. Florida, because that's where the first international convention was ever held. New Jersey, because that's where this no, past... Oh, Indiana. <laughs> New Jersey, because that's where our international president was from. Indiana, because that is where the headquarters for Kiwanis and Key Club is located. California, because that's where the very first Key Club started. And of course, our home club of the state of Pennsylvania. But then within each of those different books are the pictures. And the kids journaled. And they told a story about what our club did for the last year at each project. So, on the committee that helped, the other kids on the committee that you named, and that's they're just some of our approximately 40, 42 kids that without them, that whole group, there wouldn't have been projects to have scrapbooked about. So. Um, but these are three of the five high school students that traveled with us to San Antonio this year. Um, they experienced not only the convention, but for some kids, Key Club may be the only time those kids get out of the area. And so we make sure that they actually get to go do stuff while they're there. We went and we saw the Alamo. We did a 5K walking tour where we saw the highlights of the area. Um, our hotel was literally right on the river walk. So the kids were able to go down there and experience true Texan culture. Um, we took them to the San Antonio Zoo. Uh, the Ripley's Museum, Venus Book Museum. So, I mean, we, we make sure that these kids get the experience of a lifetime when we take them to these places. And we're just so blessed that we have kids who want to do that and want to serve and want to give back to not only Sunbury, but the state of Pennsylvania, the United States, the entire world, because that's what Key Club is all about. It's an international organization. And we are 277,000 members strong across the whole entire world, and we do what we can to make a difference for those who need. watching these tremendous students and their coaches. You know, you think about why didn't they get recognition when they first won? Where were the fire trucks when they came into town? Well, that's because you don't see them practicing on the fields when you drive by the high school. Or you don't see them at the tennis courts because they're taking pictures um, and they're doing their project. But you do see them in the community. That's kind of their practice. You see them at Toys for Tots. And what are some of the other projects you guys do? It's a Children's Miracle Network Telethon. Right. Mm -hmm. Caring for kids, which is like in like within the high school and the school district. We do the starving dog breakfast for Santa. That was mm -hmm. and that's just a few. All those cards that we're flipping and all those articles of clothing were all the projects they do. So you do see them in the community. Just don't equate it with winning national or international awards. Um, and they are the oldest club in Pennsylvania. And I have to tell you. There's somebody a little older than you here that was a member of Key Club back in the day. He's going to tell you about it. But this is a momentous occasion. Um, I'm honored to be your representative. I'm honored to be able to represent you in Harrisburg. And we have a house citation for each one of the members of the Key Club and their coaches and for the school 
that commemorates this huge win and this huge opportunity in their lives. List every student's name, list that we are the oldest key club, uh, and it's a part of Pennsylvania history as long as Pennsylvania's here. So this is a momentous occasion in all your lives. You're never going to forget this achievement. This is a big deal. So I'm so glad everybody's here to celebrate with them today, and congratulations to each one of you. Thank you. wishes, but he couldn't be here tonight. He had another obligation, so um, he asked me to bring along a letter that he wrote for you, and I will read this briefly, but I, I just realized three very important things when I was listening to the mayor and listening to Representative Culver. The first thing is that if you're planning to go on to college, I think any Circle K group would be honored to have you, and I think that if you graduate college or go on into your, working in your communities, that any Qantas Club will be honored to have you. So I hope that you continue with that line of service as you go. And thirdly, I think I'd like to hire all of you to finish all the scrapbooks that I started <laughs> when my daughter was two and she's now 22 that I are still sitting in the drawer somewhere because I don't have that skill. At any rate, the congressman says this, Dear members of the Shikolami Key Club, I write to congratulate you on receiving first place in the non-traditional scrapbook contest during the 2017 Key Club International Convention. This is an outstanding achievement of which you all should be proud. This award is a well-deserved recognition of the Key Club's creativity, dedication, and hard work. Having represented the oldest Key Club in Pennsylvania at the International Convention in four out of the five last five years, excuse me, there is no doubt that the Shikolimi High School Key Club is unparalleled in creative skills, teamwork, and unwavering dedication. Earning first place this year in the non-traditional scrapbook contest is yet another success that can be added to the club's already impressive list of stellar accomplishments. Cage, Brooke, Cecilia, Margaret, CJ, Karina, Ruth, Kelsey, Ford, and Amy Please accept my best wishes and congratulations as each of you celebrate this outstanding achievement. I look forward to hearing of more great accomplishments in your future endeavors. It remains an honor to serve each of you in the House of Representatives. All my best, Lou Barletta, Member of Congress. Thank you. Sandra Catano is here as well. Um, we want to take this opportunity as well to congratulate the, the Key Club and to recognize all that you do with the community. Uh, I know you certainly have two great advisors, uh, uh, the Mr. Ms. Reader and uh, Ms. Goof, uh, who we've, uh, you know, I've interacted with with my, my own kids in school and, and really have learned a lot uh, from both of them. Um, we, uh, have a proclamation we put together, and we only have the one. We don't have one for each of you, and obviously that's because ours are much more expensive. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, we are going to formally approve this at our meeting uh, in September. And if you give us a, a number, and maybe even uh, all the names of the kids in the key club, we can have another one done that actually specifies in my name, and they can each have one that they can come up with. So, uh, but uh, I'll just read the proclamation. Uh, <laughs> do this, so. uh, whereas the Shikolini High School Key Club has brought recognition to the city of Sunbury by winning first place in the non-traditional scrapbook contest, and whereas the Key Club was honored at the 2017 <coughs> Key Club International Convention held in San Antonio, Texas from July 5th through July 9th, 2017, whereas the success of the Shikolini High School Key Club is due to great effort put forth by the club members who committed themselves to achieving their best for Shikolini High School and to the dedica dedication of the club's advisors. Now, therefore, we, the Northumberland County Commissioners, do hereby recognize the accomplishments of the Shikolini High School Key Club and congratulate them on winning in a non-traditional scrapbook contest. We wish all the Key Club members the 
very best in their academic and lifetime endeavors. seniors, we were 15. We weren't 18. But, uh, <laughs> there, was, there was an article. Uh, the Reading Eagle did an article on September the 28th, or I'm sorry, November 28th, 1965. And you'll see the key club. The officers and that gentleman there on the left with the hair, that was me. So <laughs> if you have hair after 51 years, be happy. But I'll let you all look at this. You probably never saw this before, no. did you? Okay. Maybe we can get a copy for you or something. I'll pass oh, that around. That would, that would be wonderful because next year's our 75th birthday and we'd like to do a section in the book. Oh. So we will be contacting definitely the three of you now that we know this. Um, we oh, want, okay. We're looking for alumni because it's our 75th birthday. Okay. Um, so your thoughts and opinions, what you remember about people, what you learned from it, and we want to do a section just on the history of our heritage. Okay. Of our background. So we will be contacting you guys for your input on that. <laughs> so I, I have a question. How many water balloons did you all have at the convention? Back in our day, they used to throw water balloons out of the hotel rooms. No water balloons. <laughs> no, 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 no,
international convention. It has the theme on the front. But then, of course, you can't go to Texas without remembering the Alamo. So our mascot for Pennsylvania is a flamingo. So instead of remember the Alamo, we had remember the flamingo. They're native to Pennsylvania. You know? <laughs> and then next is C.J. Reader. Um, he is actually the a two-term lieutenant governor, which is one of the officers for the state. He held the position his sophomore and junior year. He's going to be a senior, actually, in two days because he goes to vote tech. And then on the end, we have Maggie Karpinski. She is actually our current lieutenant governor. And we are very proud to have not just club leadership, but we have leadership from the state level in our club, too. So our kids work really, really hard. And again, we thank you so much for having us here. It means a lot to the kids. They don't do community service for recognition. So that's why you don't always necessarily see us in the newspaper or out and about. Okay? They do community service because they find it fun and that's what they want to do. So thank you again so much for having us. We really appreciate it. Now, for the guest speakers. I did not. Take care. Okay, uh, how much approval of the Minnesota Fire Department yeah. transfer here? Here, I'll respond to the Fire Command Commission. Uh, before we get into the, the hold the meeting up for the CDG, is there any audience comment on agenda items only at this time? Okay, we are now going to put this meeting on hold and turn this over to Linda from Cedar Hall. Thank you. Why, thank you. Let's go back to Paul. Okay. <laughs> so, um, there's a sign-in sheet circulating that looks like this around the table. I'm not sure. Oh, you got it all the way in the end. If I could ask the audience to sign, too, and if you run out of just right on the back. Um, we, we need to show any public uh, input that came in today. And, uh, Tonight's the final public hearing for the Community Development Block Grant application of 2017. I was here before for the initial public hearing, and tonight's the night we finalized the projects um, in review. This year's CDBG allocation for the city of Sun Valley ended up being $269,615, which is about a $1,500 decrease over last year, um, which is across the board in Pennsylvania. Projects selected for funding for 2017 are Chestnut Street area milling and paving at $189,985. Clearance and demolition, 2017 for $28,110. Sunbury Fire Department for $3,000. And administration of $48,520. Are there any questions on the projects that are proposed for the government? I'm going to read to you a resolution that the council will be passing on when the regular meeting is uh, put back into place. A resolution of the city of Sunbury, common, well, I shouldn't say it'll be passing, we'll go to it. But a resolution of the city of Sunbury, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, authorizing the submission of an application to the Pennsylvania Department of Community and Economic Development for federal fiscal year 2017 under the Community Development Block Grant Program, further certifying compliance with the requirements of the program. Where it's necessary in the public interest of the city of Sunbury to receive funds from the Commonwealth through the Department of Community Economic Development, whereas the city 
Sudbury City Council has the legal authority and responsibility under Act 179 to apply for community development block grant funds whereas the Sunbury City Council has undertaken a considerable community participation process, including two public hearings, legal notices, all of which culminated in the prioritization of projects and the development of a community development plan, and whereas the Sunbury City Council is familiar with the requirements of the program, as included in the Statement of Insurances, the City wishes to apply for said funds. So be it resolved by the City of Sunbury that its mayor is authorized to prepare by the City Council of Government's Community Development Program staff the necessary forms and documents in order to submit an application to the Department of Community and Economic Development for CDBG grant funds. Be it further resolved that the Community Development Plan developed as a result of the citizen participation process and municipal information gathering is hereby adopted and be it further resolved that the mayor of the city of Sunbury is empowered to place his signature on behalf of the governing body on necessary application forms and affix thereto the official seal of the city. That's the resolution that will be voted on later after this public hearing closes. So this is the opportunity for the public to have any final input into the projects that have been chosen. Yes, Regina? Um, why, Regina Russell, community activist, why, why is the resolution necessary? It's required by the Act 179, the law that governs the CDBG program. And it, it's actually, um, it's a formal resolution that allows the mayor to sign, the mayor to sign the documents. So, so we have this resolution for every time they apply for the grants? Every year, yes. Oh, thank yeah, you. This is every year. And every year there's a community development plan and how that works. And I do have a copy, the, the council people have all been given copies. Um, we keep records on the projects that have come up, what the public, your, your sidewalk requests is in the community development plan, as a matter of fact. So when folks put in requests for projects that end up not getting funded for any reason because funds really are scarce and the needs are huge, those projects are reported in the community development plan along with demographics and information about the city, uh, the needs of the city and the most pressing issues. So that's um, that's something that goes along with this application. Thank you. Any other questions? Any public comment at all? Because this is this is the last opportunity to comment on this on the round of funding for 2017. Um, hearing none, I would ask that the meeting be closed this time. The public hearing. Okay, the meeting is now adjourned. <clears throat> Thanks. Linda, you want them to vote on the resolution? Please. And then, are you going to explain the amendment and all that stuff? Yes, I will. Right, we'll do the resolution first. You guys don't have copies of it, but it's exactly what Lindy just, just read to us. So, any motion to accept the resolution? Second. Second. Reichner? Yes. Henry? Yes. Eister? Yes. Chrissing? Yes. Kramer? Yes. All right, we have an amendment. Yeah, we're going to use the amendment first, Linda? Yes. Um, I'm presenting information on behalf of CES Engineering, who is the engineering service providing work to the Chestnut Street project. Um, with all CDBG projects, uh, it, the, the services are procured ahead of time, quotes are given, and it's my job to make sure that all the invoices come in and equal the quotes. So if there's a change in the scope of work that's needed, we do an amendment. And tonight we have amendment number one to the Chestnut Street Professional Engineering Services Agreement, where we will be, um, where the council will consider adding an additional fee of twenty-five thousand dollars to the original contract amount of one hundred and twenty-two thousand five hundred dollars, and this this additional fee is expressly for um, inspection services that were not included in the original agreement. Any questions on that? Regina Russell, community activist. So um, when, when a contractor puts in a proposal, mm -hmm. um, wouldn't it be standard to um, have a, a line for the inspection? 
I, why, why would inspection be added afterwards? You know, that is a good question. The question that is answered, Mr. Henry, is the fact initially we were going to do it in-house, locally. But we found it would be cheaper by contracting through CES. That's what yeah, but if we were making an adjustment to pay some, why wasn't that in the bid? Even though it's cheaper, why wasn't it in the bid? Because um, I think I can answer that one. When you, do, when you put a bid out for CDBG services, you can't include other labor. So if you were going to do it in-house, the cost of the in-house work could not be part of the CDBG bid. It can be now. If you, if you authorize it to be. Okay. Only if you authorize it to be. Um, it is pretty common, Regina, just so you know. Um, sometimes, quite frankly, engineers forget things. You know, they're human too. Sometimes things come up that need to be taken into consideration that weren't thought of before. Sometimes a project will incur something unexpected. There's a lot of reasons why amendments happen. In this case, uh, it was a change in the decision as to who was going to provide service. I, I just want to understand because um, to me, <laughs> when someone um, gets a bid, in that bid, I would think that they would have a line item to say for other incidentals, and that would have been included in the bid that was accepted instead of coming back and asking for that additional twenty-five thousand. Um, because then, it, the bid, if the bid was two hundred thousand, now it's really two hundred and twenty-five thousand. That is the purpose of the amendment. Um, if I'm, uh, I was not here for the original bid. So Jim, please correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding of this process is that the inspection services that you're now seeing an amendment request on were not included in the original bid. So everybody who uh, who put in a proposal for that bid, none of them bid on the engineering inspection services because it wasn't included in the in the original bid. That's why it's part of an amendment. One more question, please. So now, in, uh, on that twenty-five additional twenty-five thousand, um, Cedarcog gets their eighteen percent on that. No, our eighteen percent comes off the top. All right, thank you. So when when we um, when you we just voted on administration tonight for forty-eight thousand. Yes. That's all Cedarcog will get. It doesn't matter if it doesn't matter how many hours I put in here. Yeah. There's no additional charge. Um, it's a straight 18% of the, of the contract price. Thank you. For sure, anytime. Those are good questions. Any other questions? Seeing none, you have a motion to accept. Make that motion for the two hundred. I'll second. Yeah, second. Henry? Yes. Eister? Yes. Chrisane? Yes. Kramer? Yes. Right here? Yes. Approve the pay invoice 17018. Jim? We have uh, invoices of, uh, Wait a second. Do you want this six thousand dollar one separate from the other invoices we're approving tonight? Um, it doesn't have to be unless okay. you want it for some reason. I have it here twice, but you can do them all together. It doesn't matter. Right. Okay. Now that it's been passed. Okay. Invoices for CES. Home invoice here is for six thousand dollars. We want it for five thousand dollars. We want for seven thousand two hundred forty one dollars and seventy five cents. Sure, we have a total. Oh, it would be $18,231.75. Thank you. Make that for our motion. I'll second. Eister? Yes. Christine? Yes. Kramer? Yes. Reichner? Yes.